Prakshan, glad to know. How is your SAT preparation going on, Prakshan? Hi, Dhruvi. I'm doing good, Prakshan. Thank you for asking. Hello, Harsh. Hi, Ashwata. Hi, guys. Yeah, Dhruvi, you're doing good. That's nice. I am well. Thank you, Ashwata. Well, getting there. Prakshan, you'll get there soon. Prakshan, are you attempting the May attempt in SAT? Also, meanwhile, hey, Dimple. Hey, Harsh. All right. So you're attending the May attempt. How many of you all here are giving the May attempt? And I see you all have become friends also. That's nice. Uh, Bishwarup, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hi there. How are you doing? And hi, Shahid. How are you doing? Hi, Jofin. Ashwada, you're saying not me. You're not giving the May attempt. Hey, Harsh. Uh, Shahid and Vishwarup, is this your first masterclass? And Vishwarup, you've raised your hand. Any, any questions that you want to ask? Meanwhile, how is everyone else doing? Good evening. Shahid, this is your first masterclass, so welcome. Hope you have an amazing evening with us. We start at 6.30. Meanwhile, you have any questions regarding SETs, if you're planning to attempt SETs, or any university or application questions, you can ask me, I'm here to answer. Same goes for Vishwarup. Is this your first master class, Vishwa? Meanwhile, how is everyone else? The familiar faces, right? I'm coming back after like two master classes, I think. I missed you guys. How are you all doing? Yes, Ashmita, after two master classes. You missed me too. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So meanwhile, I want to know what is letter of recommendation, like what do teachers have to write? Okay, so Dhruvi, uh, basically letter of recommendation is given by teachers and by counselors and what to exactly write. So basically your teachers have to write about who you are, like your personality traits. Um, you know, for example, they can write that, you know, Dhruvi is a very confident child who has been very proactive in extracurriculars. Something like this is comes under letter of recommendation so the best thing that you can do is provide your teachers with a cv or with a you know resume so that they know more about you and they can write it that hi webhav how are you doing yes guess who's here <laughs> okay uh dhruvi by meanwhile uh, i hope i've answered the question any other like doubts and queries anyone you guys can ask anytime dhruvi Okay, and Arnav has joined me, Arnav. And Vishwarup, you've raised your hand in the chat box. Is there any question you would like to ask? Okay. Yeah, Vishwarup, go ahead. Like, ask your questions in the chat box. Arnav, you said no, ma'am, for? No questions? No doubts? Is that what you're saying, Arnav? Also, Arnav, is this your first master class? Because, uh, you know, I missed two master classes. Well. Okay, Arnav, so it's your first master class. Very, very welcome. Hope you have an amazing evening with us. And any doubts about SAT, you can ask. SAT score required for Stanford. Uh, Bishwarup, 1500 plus is the SAT score that is required for Stanford because Stanford is a very competitive, uh, uh, you know, university. And it comes with a lot of competition. So if you are planning for Stanford, then you should aim for a score above 1500 plus. I hope that answer it, Vishwa. And Yale, same. So Vishwarup, Yale, Brown, uh, Harvard, um, like Ivy Leagues, basically Princeton, Dartmouth, and MIT and Stanford, all of these are top ranking in global uh, uh, ranking. So if you are aiming for like, you know, top 15 colleges in the world, like Yale comes under that. So you'll have to aim for 1500 plus. Uh, Webhav, I will talk to my team about this account issue that you're having. I Hopefully, we are able to clear it. Shahid, you're saying Stanford University. That's your dream, Shahid. Is that what you're saying? Uh, meanwhile, Ishki has joined. Ami, hi, Ami, hi, Ishki. I hope I'm running right. Hi, Pratham. Uh, guys, is this your first masterclass? Whoever is joining in and whoever's masterclass is the, for the first time, please... Uh, go ahead and tell me that it's your first time. Is BTEC from IIT better than foreign 
father ms from stanford uh bishwarup iit again in india iit is i have a branch right there's iit bombay roorkee guwahati so it depends uh btech in which field and in which iit you're doing but is it preferred over foreign education that is something you have to answer for yourself it is a very personal choice whether you want to study btech from india or from abroad so that, there is like an education difference but obviously if you're aiming for like universities like stanford or ivy leagues then these universities can give you opportunities that no other university in the world can so that also comes in the picture bisharu if you want to do undergraduate from a university that's going to open up your career to another level then stanford is the way to go that's all i can say otherwise personal choice and shahid is saying yes ma'am that's the dream shahid all the very best to stanford you can do this hi lux how are you doing uh lux is the first time attending our master classes and i think aryan has also joined or oh, aryan gosavi hi aryan how are you doing uh webo i'm doing well thank you for asking fine oh, hi ma'am really also so aryan ishki is the first time attending our master classes quickly guys okay meanwhile what about the rest of you all any doubts that you um encountered while i was gone any doubts about universities or applications and by the way who all are uh, trying to give the may attempt over here i know some of them are what about the rest when are you all planning to give arnav is planning to give the may attempt where all the very best arnav i hope you start preparing for your may attempt may 7th right it's already 11th april so what you guys have like 3 weeks to go for the attempt so are you all prepared have you all started like you know preparing full fledge Webo, thank you for the compliment, and I'm, of course, I'm sure that you, sir, and you all had a great time. Just started, okay, Arnav. It's good that you have started. I hope. Um, okay, Arnav, tell me this: how many, how much score are you attempting on, like, or how much are you aiming for? Is does photography comes in the extra curricular? Shahid, photography can come under extra curricular. uh but like it depends like are you doing professional photography have you done internship under photography or is there a photography club in your school so if there's any certification that you can provide for the proof that you do photography as an extra curricular then yes it can uh, be added in your resume 1500 plus i know that is a very very high aim and i suggest that you know you start preparing like uh, really dedicatedly okay yeah? Lux, I don't think it's relevant what my degree is and what it isn't. I don't think it's a relevant question to be asked. Meanwhile, what about the rest of you all? Any other doubts you all have regarding your colleges, regarding anything else? Good evening, Jofin. How are you doing? Is this your first master class with us, Jofin? Let me know in the chat box. And also, if yes, then please let me know when are you planning to attempt your SATs. Ashmita, no, I haven't. I think I answered that last class as well. Okay. Me, all right, Jofin, all the very best. And uh, yes, Ishki, you had mentioned. Good evening, Ishki. How are you, Ishki? Have you started preparing for your series? Okay. I would suggest that we keep the conversation to SATs. Meanwhile, any other conversation about some boy band can be done later on your WhatsApp group. USA or UK, which is best for engineering? Um, Shahid, since you said that Stanford is your dream, I would just recommend that. Look, it's not about which is better. Okay, if you're applying for UK universities, then you have to give SAT as well as IELTS. So it's compulsory for UK uh, admissions to give IELTS. Whereas in USA, you can just give SAT and you'll get admission. Like. I mean, you can give ACT. There are other entrances as well, but as such, USA does not require. And even in USA universities, ACT has become optional um, from this year, starting this year. So it's not about which is best. It depends on the colleges. Like UK, there are a lot of universities which are like you know really good at like the Faculty of Engineering, and same goes for US. So 
think about particular university think about what field you want to go into and then choose which is best but for usa and uk okay so the thing is usa visa it might be a little difficult to get but uk visa is fairly easier than us visa so all of that also comes under accountability of where you want to go uh ma'am i'm in 12th board exam yet to okay jofen you're in 12th um so jofen if you're planning for undergraduation in the broad universities i would recommend that you start you know planning your attempts this year itself and it's perfect like you don't have to worry because most of the syllabus of sct is covered in uh, like math sct is covered in uh, 10th and 11th so i pretty sure you'll be able to do it hey shrishti okay any other questions you all have regarding sets not regarding other things i seen ampika has joined hi ampika and sabita hi there so to follow you raised your hand sabita is there any other doubt that you want to ask you can type it in the chat box okay a lot of you all have joined rishi uh purnala everyone else who's just joined i'm not able to take names because there's so many i'm going to say hi to everyone i'm in 11th when should i give my sets who is asking this pratham pratham now is the time that you start preparing for sets 11th and 12th is the time that you know it we would recommend that you start from 10th standard if you are in 11th standard start now start this year it's important that you get done the earlier you get done with your set dream score it's easier to focus on other things because then you'll have 12th boards and you have extra curriculars to focus on so yeah also we have 2 minutes uh before we start the master classes so any doubts you all are having go ahead and ask and we'll start the master class and i think 1 minute is left so no questions guys homi baba exam not sure laksh which exam you're talking about or Can you give some um, reference about this? I'm not sure which exam this is. Could you discuss the pattern for the English portion, Vishy? I would recommend that you join our English master class. I think our English master class is going to be tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. So you join that, and you will get complete pattern for English portion. It's a scholarship exam. All right, Harsh. I'm not sure about it. Thank you, Shashi. Means a lot. You can use that exam for co-curriculars. Okay, perfect. If that is exam for an extra curricular and it's registered with the college that you are trying to apply into, go for it. Okay, so guys, it's around six thirty, and I think it's time that we start our master classes. So welcome everyone to our math master class, and today we have Mr. Piyush Avasti sir with us. He's a mechanical engineer who has more than six years of experience in the field of higher education and study abroad test preparation. He has experience through all the abroad tests like GMAT, JRE, and SAT. And through his experience as an expert in the industry, Piyush sir has supported more than ten thousand students in their pursuit of achieving their dream schools abroad. And at Leap Scholar, he's a senior trainer for SAT Math. Right from building your basics to your major concepts to amazing tips and tricks. he is going to help you crack sat math with a perfect score of 800 he ensures an enriched learning experience through highly interactive sessions and has unlimited doubt clarification and one on one attention in his class and he is here today to give you a glimpse of everything i've just mentioned so welcome to you sir and hope you all have an amazing evening with us thank you so much shumi for the nice intro and good evening to all i officially welcome you to leap scholar a uh, good evening people who know me a very good evening to them and again a good evening to all who are new here so ashmita vaibhav yes how can i forget about you guys uh, again i am expecting the same thing so just let me tell uh, to the new students or to the new joinees here that in every class you know i come up i teach you something i my motive is to make you learn something and you know what i also want from you that once you get something in the classes you should go and try it by your own on on some different kind of questions okay 
So uh, with this note, I would like to take the class ahead and I would like to show you all that, yeah, what we have in today's class. Okay. So once again, hello all and good evening to everyone. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go and move on. So, you know, this is the basic part that we talked about in every class. I know people are already aware of it, but expecting that there are two or three students who do not know about the structure of maths in SAT. You all can please have a look that if you talk about maths in SAT, you have two sections. Okay. One is a no calculator section and second is a calculator section. The number of questions and the time part is there for both the sections on the board. So please have a look at it, those who do not know about it. Now, when I say have a look at it, what I mean to say is that looking at the number of questions and the time for each section, you know, don't you feel like that it's all about pacing in the exam? Because if you are going to take more than a minute or, or if you take two minutes or more than two minutes, you will not be able to complete all the questions in the exam, right? And guys, let me tell you that for making one question correct, you get nearly 10 marks. So think about it. Even if you are not able to attempt one question, somewhere you are going to lose 10 marks only for not attempting one question. Okay. So uh, th that is why, you, you know, we, we always come up in the classes, especially the maths teacher. You know, we, we want to show you some kind of tips and tricks with the help of which you will be easily able to crack all the questions in the defined time frame. Right. So I request everyone to please take out a separate notebook and a pencil or pen so that what all you learn in the classes, you can please uh, write it down. Okay. And make the notes. Okay. Moving on. So, you know, uh, let me tell you one thing that SAT test you on three kind of equations. And uh, those three kind of equations that you mainly find in SAT are linear equation, quadratic equation, and exponential equation. So I've seen many students, you know, they like if, if I talk on an average basis. So I see that people are uh, many people are good in solving linear equation. Then after linear, it comes quadratic. And the main problem where student get is in the exponential equation, which is this part here. So I was thinking about like, what to bring in today's class. Then I thought about let's talk about exponential equation where student find most of the difficulty and which is a very important topic tested in SAT. Right. So guys, again, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to tell you the ways to crack uh, all the questions based on exponential equation. Okay. Again, repeating, I'm going to tell you the ways to crack all the questions based on exponential equation in SAT. So that's very important. Keep on writing if you find something that can help you. Okay. So of course, math is all about practice. So I'm just going to take up questions on the board and with the help of questions, we'll learn about them. So the objective of today's class is to learn exponential equation. Okay. That's the objective. Moving on. So before I directly tell you something, uh, there's a question on the board and I'm really expecting the answer to this. I'm not expecting right or answer, a right or wrong answer. I'm really hoping to see the involvement of everyone in the class. So whatever you feel like, just ping it in the chat box, A, B, C, or D. Question goes like David deposit. $1,200 on January 1st of 2016 in a bank, which offered 12% per annum compound interest calculated on half yearly basis. So the actual question is, what is the amount due in the beginning of 2018? Take your time, read all the information carefully, and then make your answer. David is depositing a $1,200 on January 1st, 2016, and the bank is offering 12% per annum compound interest calculated on half yearly basis. What is the amount in the beginning of 2018? So many people are saying that's going to be B, right? Majority of the people are saying that's going to be B. Okay, so before I tell you anything that how to solve this question, I will come back to this question and then we'll talk about it. So before that, I just want to show you that this question is basically based on exponential equation, right? So I hope you all have noted down your answer. So most of the people are going with B. Now let's talk about it and then come back to the question. So guys, when we talk about exponential equation, so basically we are talking about the growth and decay formula. Make a note. 
Exponential equation is nothing but growth and decay formula. So what is that? When something is increases or decreases by some percent or by some multiplier over a period of time, then we have to use this growth and decay formula. Now make a note, when you are gonna use this growth and decay formula, you will be using this growth and decay formula for those questions where something is increasing or decreasing by some percent or by some multiple over a period of time. So when growth or decay is in terms of percentage, you have to use final value equal to initial value, one plus minus rate to the power number of changes. But when the growth, sorry, when the growth or decay is given in terms of multiplier, then you have to use the formula final value equal to initial value multiplier to the power number of changes. So just pay focus on these two formulas. Okay. And now with the help of few questions, we will become good to use them. Right. So what all conclusion you have to take from this thing is that whenever, whenever something is increasing by some percentage or by some constant multiplier, you have to use the growth and decay formula. So whenever something is increasing in terms of percentage, you have to use formula one. And whenever something is increasing in terms of multiplier, you have to use formula two. Okay, so with this note, I hope you all have seen the formula. Now with this note, I would like to take you on to this question. So, here we can see that the bank is offering a 12% per annum interest, which means it is increasing by 12%, right? So the rate of increase is 12%. So whenever something increases by some percent, we know that the formula is final value equal to initial value, one plus rate, because it is increasing, so one plus rate, whole to the power number of changes. Now let me explain you this formula with the help of this question. So guys, we know that the initial value is 1200, which is he's gonna divide, like uh, invest in the account or in the bank. So initial value in 2016 is 1200. What is rate here? So bank is saying that it is increasing by 12% per annum, but at the same time, what do you mean by per annum? Per annum means per year, right? So bank is saying that I will increase the amount by 12% every year, but at the same time, they are saying that the interest is calculated on half yearly basis. So rate is 12% for one year. Okay. But because you know that interest is going to be calculated on half yearly basis. So can you tell me that on half yearly basis, what is the net rate? Definitely you can't take 12% because 12% is something if it would have been calculated once in a year, but now it is calculated half yearly, which means bank will give you interest on Yes, not 12%, but 6%. So the net rate is 6%, which is 6 over 100. That is 0 0.06. Okay, now let's talk about the number of changes because we have one more term in the formula, which is number of changes. Now, what is number of changes? So see, the bank is saying that they are giving you interest on half yearly basis, which means one change is coming after half year, right? One change is coming after six months. So total, it is asking the amount in 2018. So from 2016 to 2018, the total time period is of two years. But in this two years time period, how many changes will come? Okay, how many changes will come in the span of two years? So you know that one change is coming after six months, right? because they are calculating on half yearly basis. So one change is coming after six months. So in a span of two years, you will be observing four changes, isn't it? Yes or no? Now just put everything into the formula. So final value equal to initial value and one plus rate, rate is 0 0.06, hold to the power number of changes, which is four. So the correct answer is C, not B. So guys, this is where you have to identify that what mistake you were doing initially. Majority of the people were saying B, but is that B? Oh, my fault. That's A. Yeah, I, I, I've not seen the 0.06 all apart, okay? So it's going to be 0.06, okay? So that's going to be A, not B, right? So think about it. You know, majority of the people were saying that's B, but that's not B, guys. It's A. And again, let me tell you that this is the kind of thing 
that you should uh, you should be doing whenever you are coming across any question where something is increasing or decreasing by some percent or by some multiplier okay so finally showing you the formula once again because we will be taking more questions on exponential equation which you also call growth and decay formula okay look at the formula giving you one minute of time if you want to write it down write it down somewhere so that other questions that we are going to take you can answer them correctly okay now talking about the next question the next question says the given function models the number of flower beetles in certain area where t represent the number of days after june 1 okay so we are already given with the equation which of the following is best interpretation of the number 1.11 in this context so first of all your turn and give me your answer within seconds and i request everyone to please don't uh, post unnecessary comment now the class has started those who are really eager to learn something they can stay here in the class okay otherwise uh, we are not forcing anyone right guys my motive is to make you learn something so please i i will not be expecting any unnecessary comments in the class okay okay so i am i am really looking for the answers okay that's great i am getting the answer from harish uh, vishi d and d but i am really expecting more answers so at the same time i can start giving you some hint over here okay and the hint is that if you just look at this equation don't you feel like that's a kind of exponential equation which we have talked about something like growth and decay formula isn't it this is something like growth and decay formula isn't it we have talked about this now so don't you think this is more kind of the second formula which is final value equal to initial value into multiplier to the power number of changes initial value into multiplier to the power number of changes which means if you compare this thing with this formula over here you say that 100 is your initial value right and 1.11 is nothing but your multiplier see that's very easy you know now looking at the equation you can identify if that's a exponential equation or not okay so question is talking about 1.11 and we know that 1.11 is the multiplier means your initial value is increasing by this much amount so the correct answer is d which means 1.11 actually represent the number of flower beetles grows by a factor of 1.11 so 1.11 is your multiplier which means it's a factor by which your initial value is growing every day uh shrishti if you can just you know just just look at this equation here and just remember the two formulas whenever we talk about any exponential equation we always need to remember these two formulas okay and looking at the equation you can come to the conclusion that which formula we are talking about so don't you feel like that formula that is shown to you in the question is representing the second equation here or second formula so basically 1.11 is nothing but your multiplier okay you can watch the uh, recording again you will get to know it okay let's talk about the next question the population of a town is increasing at a rate of x percent and and if you don't get that question don't worry about it we are going to do more questions maybe you will get to know right so if you don't get that don't worry now focus on this if you get this then you will be able to identify that also again waiting for the answer the population of a town is increasing at a rate of x percent if the population of a town in 2010 is 90000 what was the population in 2015 again i can only give you a hint that you know something is increasing by a percent and we have talked about when something increases or decreases by some percent you have to use the growth or decay formula which is given by this okay whenever something increases by some percent or decreases by some percent use this formula put everything so what is rate the rate here is it is increasing by x percent right 
So x percent means x over 100. Now you have to convert percent into fraction. So which means now you just need to put up everything into the formula, final value equal to initial value. And initial value is given to you in 2010, which is 90,000, okay? And one plus rate. Why plus rate? Because it's a case of increment. When it's a case of decrease, you have to use one minus rate. So one plus rate to the power number of changes. Now you know that it is increasing by X percent per year, which means one change is coming after one year, right? So if one change is coming after one year, so we are talking about a span of 2015, which means five years. So in five years, how many changes? If one change is coming in one year, so in five years, you will be observing five changes. Yes or no? So which means I can see many answers coming out and all the answers, most of the answers I can see are correct. So the correct answer over here is again option B, right? And guys, I can bet that if you just remember these things now, you will never ever make any question wrong in the SAT that is based on exponential equation. And that is why I'm asking every one of you to please keep a, a note of all these things. Though you will also be getting the recording, recording of the session, but you will only be getting if you ask for it. Okay, now let's talk about next question to make it more clear how to work with exponential equation. Okay, question goes like the population of frogs in a pond quadruples every three years. What do you mean by quadruples? Quadruple means four times, right? So people who do not know about it, I'm just writing it down. Quadruple means it is the it is getting four times every three years. If the current population of the frog in the pond is P, then what is the population of the frog after N years? And that's a very good question. Think about it. Don't lose the track. You know, I can also give you the hint here. But I don't think that this, this formula is valid over here because it's talking about something is becoming four times. So it means it is talking about multiple, okay? And whenever the question talks about multiple or whenever something, whenever something increases or decreases by some multiple, okay, then you use the formula, final value equal to initial value into multiplier into multiplier uh, to the power number of changes, right? This is what we have talked about. Again, I'm repeating, whenever something is increasing or decreasing by some multiple, okay? It is not increasing or decreasing in terms of percentage. It is increasing or decreasing in terms of multiple. So you have to use this form of formula. Okay, now just putting up everything into the formula. So what is the initial value? They are saying that the current population of the frog is P, which means the current population means the initial value is P. Now we know that multiple is four because it is becoming four times. So the multiple is four. And when we talk about number of changes, so guys, one change is coming after three years. Yes or no? Because it is becoming four times every three years. So one change, one change means it is becoming four times. So one change is coming after three years. So if you talk about a span of n years, in n years, how many changes you will get? Think about if you put n as, let's say nine, for example, if you plug in N is nine. So how many number of changes you will observe in nine years? If you know that one change is coming in three years, if one change is coming in three years, so in nine years, you will be observing only three changes, right? So in N years, you will be observing N by three changes. So that's gonna be P times four whole to the power N by three, which means B is the correct answer. No, no, no. Vishy, think about it. One change is coming, after three years, right? One change after three years. So if I ask you that in a time span of 12 years, how many changes? Think in terms of number, right now. So in a span of 12 years, only four changes because one change will come every three years, right? If that's the, so if you think about in terms of number, it will be more easy. So that is why we have to divide N by three, not multiply. So B is the correct answer. Right, getting my point how to do it. So is it making sense if we are solving more questions? Are you getting how to use the growth and decay formula, guys? Yes or no? Can I have some answers? Okay, so with more number of questions, you become more good in it. So maths is all about practice, you know? 
the more number of questions you solve the more clarification you get about how to use the formula when to use the formula you know so what kind of variations can be there and how you need to apply them so it's all about practice i cannot uh, show you all all kind of questions i can just show you the ways right okay now moving to the next question i'm really expecting the right answer this time um, so before we move on to the next question can i jump in for 2 seconds yeah 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 please please all right so everyone i've launched a poll it's basically for your feedback which is super important and valuable to us and it's going to take you 0.3 seconds to complete this and i'll get i'll let you get back to all of your math equations think you're super smart kids and meanwhile i'm pretty sure you're having an amazing time with your class quickly guys it's going to take like only 3 seconds thank you yash thank you ashmita <laughs> she's already there solving questions shishti done i am still not seeing everyone participating in the poll it would really help if you all could just you know give your poll and then i'll stop actually that was my fault because i i somehow have moved on to the next question so people are solving it instead of giving the poll right so i move back to the the question that i discussed i think now they will be answering it <laughs> so guys just just uh, give it quickly so that we can talk about it you want to learn more now so just do it quickly otherwise we are going to lose time in this part exactly and you all were just getting started with the questions yes we have many questions coming up on the screen so just do it quickly and then we can move on All right. Uh, you can we can continue, sir. Thank you. Okay, quick. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. The function is defined by the given equation that models the number of uh, re reindeer in a population t years after nineteen hundred, where A t is between zero and forty. Which of the following equation best models the number of reindeer in the population d decades after nineteen hundred? That's great. I I really like when you say like this that you are able to solve the question within three seconds, within thirty seconds, because that is my objective of coming here and making you learn. good arnav good harish the question is really simple you know even you don't need to pick up your pen to solve these kind of questions in exam right but for that you should know the right kind of ways and i don't know why but i am you know i'm really feeling happy to see all the correct answers on the board think about it if this 15 to 20 minutes of this session can bring this much change think about it if you are going to take all the classes oh and and that's the right and that's the right answer let me tell you yeah so everyone has given the right answer but uh, as my duty i need to explain this to all okay uh, we are talking about d decades and you know that when we talk about decades so one decade one decade has how many year so that's 10 years right okay now the question is saying that this equation is basically modeling your population after 2 years but question is asking that which equation models the number of deer after d decades okay so for example if you take uh, for example if you take t to be 40 then how many decades you should take so in 40 years you have only four decades right so which means your equation should be like uh, having 25 into 1.09 so whenever you talk about t to be 40 okay so you should be having four decades so it isn't it like 40 divided by 10 will give you like four uh, decades 
right so the answer has to be the time has to be divided by 10 in order to okay uh this question is talking about i think there is there is uh, if you talk about the decades so here the answer choice is not in terms of t it is in terms of d guys if it is in terms of t then you would have said t over 10 but now it is in terms of d so in terms of d what it should be so think about it you have this equation i i also not paid attention if this equation but if i give you that d is 4 so when d is 4 and you are going to use this equation so what do you write in place of t? So you know that when we talk about four decades, it means we are talking about 40 years, yes or no? So when we are talking about four decades, which means we are talking about 40 years. So which means the equation should look like 25 into 1.09 to the power 40, 40. And 40 will only come when you multiply this d by, four, by 10, right? So it has to be d, not c. I thought the answer choice is, is in terms of T. It is not in terms of T, it is in terms of D. Okay, so think about this equation. This equation is valid for years. Okay, again, I'm telling you, if you're talking about decades, decades, if you take decades to be four, it means you are talking about 40 years. So in place of T, what should go? In place of T, you should write 40. And when will 40 come? When you multiply your D by 10. So it is actually D into 10 should go in place of T. So the correct answer is D. I hope you are getting my point. Right. Okay. Talking about the next question. So just look at it carefully. The correct answer to the last question was not C. It is D once again. Okay. Barney deposit $2,000 in a bank, which offered 12% interest compounded every three months in a year. Guys, be careful. The interest is compounded every three months in a year. Which of the following is the amount he received after 12 years? Harish, the equation that was given to you is in terms of T, right, Harish? Think about it in this way. So if I ask you that after four decades, what is the population? So you will be using the original equation, right? which is given to you in terms of T, but I am giving you the value in terms of decade, after four decade. So once you go back to the original equation there, you will place 40 now because the time is in years. So will you place four there or will you place 40 there? You place 40 now when you use that equation. So you have to multiply your decades by 10, only then you get the time in years. And once you get the time in years, you place in that equation. Okay, this question here, let's talk about it. Question says that Barney deposit 2000 in a bank, which offers 12% interest compounded every three months. One thing is for sure, question is talking about that something is increasing by 12%. And whenever something increases or decreases by percent, we, which formula we use? We use the formula final value equal to initial value, one plus rate, whole to the power number of changes, right? Now, the initial value is already given to us. That's 2000. The rate, okay. The rate that is given to us, that is 12%. But whenever it is given like 12%, means it is given uh, it is given per annum rate or per year rate. So that's a per year rate, okay, guys. But, which means if it is compounded only once in a year, only once in a year, it would have been compounded on 12%. But because it is compounded three after every three months, which means how many times in a year? Every three months means how many times in a year you will uh, have compounding. So every three months means you will have four times in a year, right? Four times in a year, okay? Four times in a year, which means the net rate that you have to take, because it is compounded four times, not one time in a year. So it will be 12 over four. So that's gonna be 3%. So rate, effective rate has to be 3%, which is three over 100 
that's 0 0.03. Now I'll just put everything into the formula, final value equal to initial value one plus rate to the power number of changes. Now, how many changes are coming in one year? So in one year, you have four changes, right? Isn't it? In one year, four changes because you're compound compounding four times. So in one year, four changes. So in 12 years, how many changes? In one year, four changes. So in 12 years, 48 changes, right? So the answer to the question has to be option A. So making sense, As the four came because the 12 percent that is given to you is a rate is a yearly rate that a yearly rate, which means if it is compounded only once in a year. But because the question is saying that it is compounded every three months in a year. So every three months in a year, which means how many times in a year? Three months, three months, three months and three months, four times in a year. So if it is compounded four times in a year, so they will not give you 12 percent every time. Okay, they will only be compounding on 12 over 4, which is only 3%. So 3% after 3 months, again after 3 months, 3%, again after 3 months, 3%. That is how it goes on. Right? Okay, let's talk about this question now. The last question for the day. Okay, this is the last question for the day. Take your time and think about it to make it correct. Okay, Harish has come up with the answer and that's D. Oh, that's great. Good to see. Okay, uh, the, the question says that, that the half-life of a substance is 150 years. Okay, which of the following exponential equation models the amount of substance that remains T years after 200 gram of substance is applied. So which means the initial value of the substance is 200 gram, okay? 200 gram, okay? That's the initial value. And we know that here it is saying, I'm talking about half-life. Half-life means when something becomes half, half of the original amount. So which means here the multiplier is given to us, isn't it? What is given to us? The multiplier, because something is getting half, okay? And whenever the multiplier is given to us, which formula we use? Final value equal to initial value into multiplier to the power number of changes. Yes or no? Right? When multiplier is given to you. So you already have the initial value, which is 200 gram. Multiplier is given 1 by 2 because they're talking about half life. Half life means when something becomes half. So multiplier is 1 by 2. And when you talk about number of change. So, you know, so one change is coming after one. 150 years, which means it is getting half after 150 years, which means one change, one change is coming after how many years? After 150 years. After 150 years, we are observing one change, but when it will get half. So now the question is talking about T years. So if one change is coming after 150 years, so in T years, how many changes? So in T years, how many changes will come? That is what we have to find. How many changes, right? If you are not able to identify this way, let's try to plug in some value for T. Let's take T to be 600 years. So you know that if one change is coming after 150 years, okay, so in a span of 600 years, how many changes? 600 by 150, because one change after 150 years, so in 600 years, it will be four changes, which means what you are doing, actually you are just dividing T by 150 to find the number of changes. So everything goes like in place of number of changes is T divided by 150, right? So the correct answer is option D. And I've seen that many people has given the right answer. And that's great. Good to see. Guys, that's all kind of variations that I've taken on.
there's all kind of variations that you can see in the exam and even you you won't find these many variations i tried to cover everything now it is very easy for you to solve each and every question based on exponential equation not only for sat exam but for any kind of exam just rewatch the recording if you want and I, I i bet you that you will be easily able to crack all the questions okay so thank you so much this is what is from my side now before we move on uh, my colleague will tell you something about our course that we are offering you yes and so may you can we... please carry on Yes, sir. And before we move on to the course details, how was the session, everyone? Enjoyed, learned something new, or no? Let me know in the polls as well as in the chat box. And again, this poll is also going to take just zero point three seconds. How was it, guys? Enjoyed, learned new things. Pretty sure, sir. Covered almost all of the kind of like concepts that we need to know about SATs. Yeah. Enjoying. I do not see answers in the poll, though. I really hope you all give the poll. Okay. Come oh, on, you are so smart with maths and giving answers in maths. You are not fast enough in giving answers to this multiple choice question. And I know I'm really glad that um you found this class great. Really means a lot to us. Come on, students. It's literally been like what two minutes to me launching the poll, and I still haven't received answers. What is this? You are so fast with math. You are not fast enough with multiple questions. I mean, multiple choice is not even something that you have to solve. Okay, and till you all give me your poll, I will quickly get to the course details, and then we could take up all your questions. So we provide a course of seventy plus hours, where you're going to have twenty five live sessions on a weekday batch and sixteen live sessions in the weekend batch. Our twenty five live sessions are hundred and one and a half hours each, and sixteen live sessions are two and a half hours each, with representative course content. What this basically means is that everything we teach is very unique. It's specifically curated for all of you. You're not going to find this content in any other course or in. any other batch in the market for that matter and i think today's master class is going to give you a glimpse of exactly that right like whatever we teach you is directly from sct exam from past sct the concepts that you will require that um, you know has been repeated throughout the scts so that's there we also give additional study handouts so there are 10000 questions waiting for all of you to solve so anyone who is preparing for may attempt or for that matter october attempt um you know not only for them but anyone who's preparing to you know give scts this is the perfect place to come to we also provide you the kaplan scts prep guide right so that's one of the best uh, guides that you can use for additional practice in scts and you don't have to search or buy it we are literally going to send it to you on your doorstep and we also provide you one year of recorded full course content so basically everything that we teach is recorded it is uploaded on our student portal and you can go access it anytime anywhere you want with all of the concepts right there at the click of your finger with 33 full length mock tests so guys tell me what is the best way to prepare for sct to actually solve an sct exam right and you are not only going to get one or two of the full length tests you're going to have 33 full length mock tests and four of them will be live proctored what this basically means is four of four of the full length mock tests is going to be solved when the teacher is present so it gives you a feel of actually experiencing that exam with detailed feedbacks so it's very important you know your strengths your weaknesses where you need to improve and how you need to improve and that can only be done through our guidance and through experienced faculty right so yeah uh, i think that sums up the course details also let me just tell you the batches so we have the weekday batch that starts on 14th of april basically in 3 days now is the time to join and our weekend batch is 16th april so of course like you know on the weekend it's like somewhat more easier for you all to like go through the classes because it's just two and a half hours each and on weekend you won't have the stress and load of your school as well so yep so guys uh i think i ended up with the course details and if any other doubts that you want to you know ask about sats applications everything else please go ahead and ask and today there's going to be no surprise so today's surprise is going to be any question you ask me i'm going to add like additional information to it 
so yes and hope it was an amazing evening hope you all learned hope you all are going to take this back with you right not just learning for just an hour but like you know actually implementing it on your sets all the very best you're welcome ishmeet any questions you all have regarding uh, the exam or regarding applications regarding sops lors visa interviews anything rakesh i'm not sure what you're saying and shashti you're most welcome rakesh you've raised your hand is there any question you want to ask please type it in the chat box and meanwhile i think bishwaroop if you still present in the class you had asked me can you give october attempt yes bishwaroop you can in fact after the may attempt you are going to be left with three more attempts guys one is going to be in august then in october and the last one for the year in december so anyone who started preparing uh and who's not sure of like the may attempt well there are still going to be you know three more attempts for you, left for you to uh, you know practice for yeah what about june attempt ishmeet june attempt is only for usa students uh indian students do not get to write the june attempt so that's a problem so it's only may august october and december hope that answers ishmeet any other questions you all are having if no questions then we can end the master class then i have to say bye to all of you okay meanwhile have you this is just a reminder have you all given the poll okay no question one more minute and then we'll end the master class if you don't have questions I think now is the time you ask me questions, right? Now I can give you all the information you all need. Okay, no questions today. All right, so you all are really pro at SETs and whatever it is that you're looking for. All right, see you tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow's master class is English SET master class. Hope you all join then as well. see you tomorrow and hope you all have a wonderful evening and please please take care of yourself thank you so much for joining in guys